Hi, I'm Lisa Carberg, host of Seasons Magazines Up Close. We're so proud and excited to bring you the best of Seasons Magazines, delivered to over 50,000 Connecticut households free, from the Litchfield Hills to the Connecticut shoreline and in between. At Seasons Magazines Up Close, we focus on the unique stories, people, and places that you may not even know about. In this edition, our team of correspondents travel the state to come up with some really unique stories about Connecticut. We have a little something for everyone. Today, take a ride with our own Hillary Russo as she rides with the Discovery Channel's Wayne Carini. Let's hit it. How fast are you going to go? Fast as you want. Fast enough to keep up with a Chrysler town and country. We're going to lose them in about two minutes. When it comes to cars, Wayne Carini isn't messing around. But this self-proclaimed automobile architect knows his stuff. We got behind the wheel of a vintage 79 Ferrari and hit the road so I could find out more about the guy under the hood. Don't panic if we lose you. For eight seasons, the Glastonbury native has been the star of Velocity's hit TV show, Chasing Classic Cars, the brainchild of car enthusiast and television executive Jim Ostrowski. Since the beginning, Essex Television Group, co-founded by Ostrowski, has been producing the show. Nine years later, Carini, a devoted husband and father, is no stranger to the streets. The show is seen in millions of homes in over 37 countries. So when Wayne comes to town, car lovers flock. You're kind of a celebrity everywhere you go. All over the world, 37 countries now. It's amazing. amazing. Yeah. So what's it like when you come home? Are you just Wayne, the local guy in Connecticut, or Absolutely. do you still get that? No, no, no. It's, it's you know, you got to have your feet on the ground. Uh, this TV show could be all over with few years you, know, you got to keep your, your job and your family and family is the most important thing to me and it always has been you know I have an unbelievable wife that, <laughs> that she just is so understanding and uh, she takes such great care of our daughter you mentioned one of your daughters has autism yeah. that's a uh, something very close to your heart as far as uh, getting the word out and supporting that cause we don't want to uh, I don't want to stand on a soapbox and preach about it, but yet we want people to know that the problem exists and uh, that maybe uh, prompts them to look into it a little bit more and to, to be willing to donate to, to that charity. And, you know, I, I'm so lucky because our our shows are not scripted. I, I come up with all the ideas. Mm -hmm. It's just how my life goes and then yeah. they film it. So it's, it's pretty easy and every once in a while I'll have my daughter in it. Carini's love of cars started at a young age. Hanging around the family garage and attending car shows with his dad, Wayne first caught a fever for Ferraris. In fact, the name of his Portland business, F40 Motorsports, is no coincidence. His catalog of celebrity clients includes everyone from Leno to Letterman. And his laundry list of restoration jobs is equally impressive, including some classic finds you may recognize from the movies. His latest project, the notorious Buick Roadmaster convertible from Rain Man, owned by film's director Barry Levinson, who's loaning the car to Carini for the summer car show circuit. But not without good reason. Car shows are always great to have charities involved. So we always try to make sure, and because of my involvement with autism, now more and more car shows have that as, as their uh, main charity. Yeah. So they're able to get back. Do you feel that chasing classic cars and just your love for this industry has created more awareness? Is it has changed the automobile world and yeah. how people look at automobiles and how they understand them a little bit better. Um, you know, people always say, I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your TV show. And, and it's just changed my life totally. Let's get this thing done. Let's get it sold big money. You go from, from auction to restoration to selling. Is it hard to let go of something that you've bought, kind of nurtured, you rebuilt, you restored, and then you're going and you're selling it? Yeah, it's, it's a little difficult sometimes to let something go, but you look at the bigger picture. In order to buy a new one, you have to sell an old one. People always ask me, what's the best car that you own? And I yeah. say the next one. How are you about letting other people drive your cars? I'm good with it. Yeah? Good, yeah, so I was brought up in, a, in my father's uh, house where, boy, don't mess with his cars. Don't yeah. get within 10 feet of them. Everything's a museum. Them. You can't, you 
you know, when we would go to car shows, I was the guard. I'd stand next to the car all day and tell people, please don't touch it, please don't get near it. I had learned from that that I didn't want to be that way. So I'm good. Anybody wants to get in it, touch it, I don't care. You know, we can always fix it. And that's how we get young people involved with cars. If you just tell them you can look at it, but you can't get near it within 10 feet of it, you can't drive it, you can't touch it. Well, kids will go, well, what do I want with that? But if you invite them to go and sit in the car and you start the engine up for them or you take them for a ride, it changes everything. Is it ever about the speed? Oh, yeah. I mean, we love, <laughs> we love to go fast. But How fast can this go? Uh, this will do 120. Oh. You know, it's, this is, this it's is like a walk really, in the car. This is not really a super fast car, but yeah, the speed is very fun. Yeah. Uh, Environment. And I think you have to have more respect for it as well. Oh, okay, we're gonna lose the car behind us. <laughs> I think I have a new passion. The next question is, I just gotta figure out which car it's gonna be. I think it's this one. For Seasons Magazine's Up Close, I'm Hilary Russo. We'll see you next time, hopefully driving this. Thank you, Hillary and Wayne, for letting us come along on your exhilarating ride. Next up, our own Tom Lewis takes us to Seabury, an upscale, active lifestyle community in Bloomfield. Thanks, Lisa. We're inside the lobby of Seabury, an active life plan community in Bloomfield, Connecticut, a beautiful place for residents and staff alike. We decided to come in here to take a look at some of the offerings they give their residents, some of the plans, and some of the ways they make them create, live, and thrive on these beautiful grounds. Come with us now as we take a look inside and out at Seabury. We looked at what Seabury was all about, we were kind of blown away. Uh, first of all, the continuing care uh, arrangement was new to us, and my husband was older than I, and that seemed like maybe that was a really good idea. But beyond that, um, Seabury's commitment was to all aspects of life. It, it just felt very welcoming, very, very much at home right from the start. It has changed my life in many ways. And, you know, when I moved here, I didn't want my life to change particularly because I loved my life. But it has just enriched it so much. Our relationship is very close. Um, in fact, when I started working here, I had no children. And now I have a nine-year-old and a three-year-old. And my kids come here, and it's like a family for them. And the residents treat them such. Um, they knew my daughter's name before she, uh, she looked at them, I remember, and said, how do all these people know me? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's really, it's a, it's a very family-driven um, environment. And that's what Seabury sets out to do every day within the community. A relaxing pool and spa, a full-service salon, and a fitness center that has everything a resident could ask for. We have traditional fitness classes, so 90% of our residents are um, involved in some sort of traditional fitness. But I think what's exciting about Seabury is that we go beyond traditional fitness and do athletics too. So we have a trail system and our residents built that. So we have that, we have um, pickleball, bocce, um, all sorts of things. And to be honest, they're really competitive too, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> a soul soothing stroll that residents like Roseanne take as often as she can. There's one woman who walks the trails and sends an email out every morning to say, this is blooming in this area and I saw these birds. It's just wonderful. <laughs> On any given morning, if I'm walking between my cottage and the main building, I'm going to pass hmm, six to 12 people and they're all going to say, good morning, Carol and maybe pick up a conversation that we had at dinner a few days before, or say something about a meeting that we're both going to, or saying, I'll see you at chorus rehearsal this afternoon. It's remarkable how that changes your life. I would say the first word that comes to mind is active. It's an active community. Um, but I also would throw in the word creative because um, we have a really um, hot art scene here. The head of every department comes to visit you in your, your, your apartment or cottage. So when he was there, I said, I really think we should have little galleries for the artists that live here so we could display our art. Lo and behold, you know, we're about to open 
two more galleries. Well, you have a lot of downtime, so time that you used to spend washing the floor, mowing the lawn. All the fun <laughs> stuff. You don't miss that. Buying right. groceries. <laughs> now I spend learning watercolor, so uh, yeah. 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 And we sing together, and by popular request, we have actually done an hour show here. And while the beauty of the trail is tantalizing, it's what's being served up inside that makes Seabury a cut above. Five-star dishes plated and presented on a daily basis. We aim for the highest quality possible. Um, if you go out to a five-star restaurant, that's what you're here every night. Uh, we source local ingredients from local farms. I just did a wine tasting yesterday with uh, a vineyard from Granby. Uh, so we try and uh, incorporate all these uh, awesome things that the Valley has to offer. Even offering up special menu options like gluten-free and vegan dishes, all served up in a comfortable upscale dining atmosphere. The homes at Seabury are spacious, bright, and warm, but nothing seems to match the warmth shared between Seabury residents and staff. The relationship between the staff and the residents is wonderful. It's a very family-driven um, environment. We all care about each other. Uh, we work together to make sure that things happen here. And, uh, and yeah, I would say that we're friends, but family feels like a better word. It's a real gift at this stage of my life to have the time to make new, deep friendships. And that's one of the great blessings. And I think if you asked 50 people here at Seabury what's most important, they would say they're friends, including some friendships with staff members. It's delightful. I go around hugging everybody. <laughs> and you know what? They hug me back. And, and they mean it. And they mean it. Yeah, they do care. And that's a look inside Seabury, an active life plan community in Bloomfield, Connecticut. We certainly want to thank all the staff and the amazing residents here for giving us a look inside what is a truly wonderful place to live, to learn, and to create. For Seasons Magazine's Up Close, I'm Tom Lewis. Thanks, Tom, for that exciting look at what's going on at Seabury. Next up, a celebrity one-on-one -on -one interview from Seasons Magazine's editor, Deb Barry. She took a stroll with WFSB Scott Haney at a charity golf tournament to find out more about the life of this magnanimous weatherman and local TV star. I'm Deb Barry with Seasons Magazine's Up Close, and we're here at beautiful Tungsis Plantation in Farmington. It's a great day to play golf and Scott Haney is here doing exactly that so we thought we'd get in a golf cart and try to catch up with him. Callaway two. I think I've hit myself with my own golf ball. That must hurt. It hurts. Worse is the softball though, getting hit by the softball because they're bigger. Would you rather win an Olympic medal, an Oscar, or a Pulitzer Prize? Oscar. For what? For acting. In yeah. what? Like in a, in a, in a comedy. Well, I I've never, have, I've I've never confidence acted. confidence in you. I mean, I do the forecast every morning, but uh, nonetheless. <laughs> Great shot. <laughs> Shut up. Hands down, I would love to win Shut an Oscar. Up. Everybody, when they knew that I was going to talk with you, said, please ask him what he does to keep his energy up all the time. Well, the other day I went to bed at 4 p.m. <laughs> and I slept till 3 a.m. Uh, yeah. I try to, I try to, I just try to get to get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Um, a lot of times that doesn't happen, but a cup of coffee in the morning. Yep. I do uh, just about, one, just one, 32 ounces, a cup of coffee, and I'm okay. good to go. And uh, I'm just when that camera goes on, you just got to be up. You, you got to be, be up. You got to be on. So what about Italy though? You didn't oh, stick to that plan there, I did, did not. you? Florence was the biggest city that we visited. Yeah. I saw the David. Oh, oh you did. Unbelievable. He has my body. <laughs> <laughs> they, sculpt, they sculpted it after me. No! Well, I almost got it in the hole. <laughs> Do you see that? So what's the thing where you're picking up balls? Like, is that like? Oh well, people lose score? balls, and then we find the balls, and when we go to look for our own balls, we find other people's balls. So we lose our balls, and we pick up other people's balls, and we end up ahead of the game. <laughs> uh, the Channel 3 40th Anniversary Gala—that's our sponsorship. Channel 3 has been the media sponsor for the Channel 3 Kids Camp for 40 years, and we're wow. having a big gala November 4th. Tickets are still available. If you'd like to attend that, I'm going to be the MC. We're going to have a big mm. blowout auction. It's going to be a great night. Black tie. Nice. 
Wow, Scott Haney is certainly a busy guy. Thanks, Deb and Scott. Next on Seasons Magazine's Up Close, our own Maggie Pereiras takes a trip with Mike Janamore to see some of the beautiful designs his company, Aqua Pool, have done here in Connecticut. We had a beautiful summer this year, and a lot of us got to spend some good quality time outside. If you spent some time in your own yard, you may have ended up with a glowing tan, a list of improvements that you'd like to make for next year, and a little something that I like to call pool envy. If your yard is ready for an upgrade, then it's time to call Mike from Aquapool. So I'm here today with Mike Giannamore of Aquapool. So tell me a little bit about the process. How does it all start? And it all starts with a phone call. There are some people that call up and it's going to happen now. Mm -hmm. There's other people who they call up and they say, we have no idea. That's probably we... a lot of people I would think too. And they need a pro. Yes. And that's our staff. You will spend more time looking at your pool than you ever will in your pool. You might be reading Absolutely. in the chair, you might be dining by the pool, you might be sitting by the fire pit, but you're going to be around the pool or from the house looking out at the pool more than anything. So it starts with how is this going to look? And then it's all questions and answers and interviews and discussions mm. on how is it going to function and which features that you may not have even known about. Right. We'll tell you about them. We're going to make sure your money is spent the right way. Once we build it, it's going to perform the way we said it would. And then if you need any help with it, we're there seven days a week, 12 months of the year if you need our help. There's a lot of families we built pools for that they said, this is the final house. We're never moving or we moved to this area because of the grandkids, right? and we want them here. What are some of the favorite things that you've done? Well, the entire office will make fun of me <laughs> because I'm always in favor of the linear geometric rectangles. I like the straight lines. I like the classic shapes. There's one that it's called a perimeter overflow. Okay. So it's a rectangular pool. The hot tub is in the middle of the shallow end, so your toes okay. get wet on your way in and the pool, the spa overflows into the pool. The pool overflows into a gutter system. The gutter system drains into a surge tank. Picture a big uh -huh. fuel tank underground. And then we pump all the water back up into the spa and the pool to make it overflow so again. Rotates. Yeah, so it looks like the fountains outside uh, Versailles in France, but it's a swimming pool in a backyard right outside of Hartford. Okay. You don't open a catalog with what we do. There's no catalog that you choose model A through Z. Everything from the 20 by 40 rectangle to something like this is mm -hmm. customized. Where are the steps? How big are the steps? What's the interior finish? What kind of lighting? How many lights? And then once we get to build the pool, the customer service after the fact is a huge part of all of it. We stand behind what we do. When the pool is done, we have a team of people that are out on Saturday afternoons taking care of yards. We're on call on weekends. We do maintenance. Just and like you do opening and closing at the beginning and the end absolutely, of the season. Absolutely, absolutely. And just like a lot of people don't mow their own lawns, a lot of people don't want to clean their own pools. So where did you start from though? What are the roots of Aquapool? 1970, the company was in its first year of existence and my father bought a pool. So he wasn't there yet. No. He just bought the pool. He bought a pool. Like our existing customers, like our new customers, he thought, my family, there were five kids, uh -huh. would enjoy a swimming pool. He had his real job, that's what we say, and he <laughs> thought, wow, this really changed my family's life. It really added to the environment. I believe in what this company created for me. He got so entrenched in the business that he then became a partner. The original owner moved to Florida. My father became the full owner of the company. But it's a family business. My, I work with one of my sisters. Another sister worked there for many years. And we have a staff of people that rivals no one. I work with the nicest, hardest working people you've ever met. I tell people, even though my father doesn't like this line, other than a really well-designed kitchen. Very important. There's nothing to bring your family together, to bring your friends and family together like a well-designed backyard pool. People want to entertain, they want to lounge, they want to cool off, and they want everyone together. And that is that is the goal, and that's what people call us for. They want the family together, they want the friends to be here, they don't want to travel, they don't want to go to the rental house, and they try to create something like this. 
maybe you have a fire pit, you're gonna be out here in a part of your yard that you wouldn't have used before. You're gonna leave the TV behind, hopefully. Hopefully you'll even leave your cell phone behind. You're out here, you're by the pool. Even if you don't get wet, you used the pool. Then, as the sun goes down, maybe you'll turn on the hot tub. Maybe you actually will get wet. Dogs and pools, because this particular homeowner- We have, we have a few. Has quite a few dogs. Yes. <laughs> Which and you notice when we came in, there was one in the pool. Yes. Right. And they run in and out on their own. It's right. It's so in, in the deep end here, you got big benches. Yep. Uh, we call them love seats. You could call them deep end benches, even though the pool is only five feet deep. Here we go. Maybe. Nope. So nope. there's <laughs> large benches, kitty cornered in each corner, and then you got walk-in stairs. Uh huh. But the dogs with a gunite swimming pool, let them swim. And I know growing up with a pool in my backyard, we had a dog that literally would use the diving board, would jump oh, and get so spring. that is so much fun. But it's, a, it's one of the benefits. People obviously love their dogs. Uh, sometimes a We're lot of dogs. We're kind of surrounded. <laughs> Correct. So why not? More than half of what we do is a pool spa combo. Okay. And the logic, the logic behind the pool spa combo is that the season can be very short. Even though the August we just experienced was very hot and summers can be very hot and dry, the season's very short to invest your time and energy, never mind your money, in a backyard pool, we want to extend that season as much as possible. So heater, obviously heaters are a good way to do that. But by having the spa attached, our homeowners will be out here in April. If you ask my wife, she'll tell you October is the best time of year to have a pool. Mm -hmm. People will come out in November and they'll heat up the hot tub. They might not get in the pool. Our job is to educate you as to what's possible, teach you about some things you didn't necessarily know about that might be important to your family and that you might really want once you learn more about them. From custom designs to modern facelifts, spas to waterfalls, it seems that if you can dream it, Aquapool can create it. If your backyard is ready to be upgraded to a private oasis, there's only one call you need to make, Aquapool. Thank you, Maggie and Mike, for that story that gave us pool envy. Now, our Pat Lori takes us to a unique farm with some unique owners, Arethusa Farms. Thanks, Lisa. Here at Arethusa Farm in Litchfield, Connecticut, all of the cows have names, personalities, and you might even say they're a bit pampered, too. All of this extra care could be the secret behind Arethusa's tasty dairy. Let's check it out. We raise good kids. <laughs> well raise behaved, right? Well behaved, right? Behind every great cow are these men, the founders of Arethusa Farm. They didn't plan on becoming dairy farmers, it just sort of happened. And we just walked across the street and we made a deal, we bought a farm. Tony and George, who live in Litchfield, were well-known executives at luxury shoe company Manolo Blahnik. Now they're known for their high-end dairy products. They put care into everything they do here, and it shows. Our genetics are known all around the world. People buy into our genetics. We have beautiful herd of cows in our barn. There are more than 300 cows on the property, Jersey, Holstein, and Brown Swiss. It's so clean and beautiful. The farm I grew up on is uh, <laughs> not quite so lovely. And so it, it's just a thrill to see the cows so well cared for. Each is treated like a real lady, washed, brushed, and fed the finest feed and hay. We take great pride in our cleanliness here at the farm. Um, we do run an extremely low somatic cell count, which is a number that dictates the health of the udder and the care that we're providing and environment that we're providing for the cattle. It's a team effort here, everyone working together for award-winning results. For me, it's wonderful to see. I mean, I was here at a point in time where they were, it was only the farm. Um, I remember sending out the first uh, vat of milk to the processing plant and to see what it has become now is extremely special. At Arethusa, they produce milk like it used to taste, cheeses, yogurt, and butter. But that's just the beginning. A few miles away, a trifecta for your taste buds. The dairy, cafe, and coveted farm-to-table restaurant, all serving up beautifully designed culinary delights using Arethusa's dairy products and fresh ingredients from other local farms. Everything is made in-house. Everything from the milk is made across the street. The cheese is made across the street. All our bread is made in house, made with our own butter, our own milk, our own dairy. Um, and so it's very just unique. Customers appreciate all the work that goes into creating a successful farm to table operation. It's really big right now, all over the United States, and everybody wishes they could do it. 
but very few people take the next step and do it, and they have done it, and they've done it right. Tony and George give back to their community and are taking steps to ensure its success for future generations to come, continuing to create well-adjusted cows and satisfied customers. From farm to table to tummy, I think it's time for me to try some of this fabulous food. For Seasons Magazine's Up Close, I'm Pat Laurie. Lastly, on this edition of Seasons Magazine's Up Close, our final thought with storyteller Matt Dix, who just happens to be a raging Patriots fan. I'm in Gillette Stadium on an October night, high above 60,000 screaming people. I'm in row 26, section 31, seat 5. I have been in this seat for the last 10 years. It's a place that feels like home to me. I've been a New England Patriots fan for as long as I can remember. When I was a little boy, I'd sit with my grandfather in front of the game and I would pretend to understand what was happening on the field until I finally did. In high school, I actually dated a girl because she once lived on the same street as New England Patriots quarterback Steve Grogan. Just her former proximity to this football great was enough for me to fall for her, temporarily at least. In 1986, I was eating Pringles and guzzling tab and weeping as the Chicago Bears stole the Patriots' chances at a Super Bowl away. And in 1997, I was watching the Patriots-Packers Super Bowl at a friend's house when Desmond Howard returned a kickoff 99 yards for a touchdown, ending our chance at a championship. I was so angry, I ripped my shoe off my foot and threw it through a wall in my friend's house. To his wife's credit, she just put a painting right over the hole and eventually forgave me. And in 2001, when the Patriots won the Super Bowl at last, I embraced Shep and wept in a way that I know made him feel a little uncomfortable. My day began about eight hours ago. I left my home in Connecticut to drive to Foxborough. I picked up Shep along the way. In addition to the $107 we paid for the ticket, we paid $40 more for the privilege to park in a muddy field about a mile from the stadium. And another $20 to our friend Tony, who's going to provide our feast for the tailgate today. It's all meat. That is what we eat. It is steak and barbecued ribs. It's hamburgers and hot dogs. It is chicken-wrapped bacon, and on beautiful days, bacon-wrapped bacon. On this night, the rain is coming down in sheets. It is a great sacrifice to be a member of a National Football League team, but some of us are willing to make that sacrifice. If you've missed any of the show or would like to watch additional footage, share with friends, download our free app, Seasons Magazines, Connecticut, available on all devices. For Seasons Magazines Up Close, I'm Lisa Carberg. Thanks for watching.